big tooth. Tooth. So when I'm sifting, I usually push it to the bottom because there's no sense lifting that gravel all the way up to the top of the water. And then I just take my shovel and fill the sifter while I'm holding it on the bottom. Once it's full, then I'll pick it up. Right on the edge of the gravel here. Move further out. And it comes out like that, so you just splash it around a little bit. And all the stuff washes out. And let's see. Yeah. And you just kind of rearrange and see what there is to see. See, one thing is you got to remember is like almost everything you see here at one time was a fossil. It's whether or not it's identifiable as a fossil now. Some of them are limestone. That's not a fossil, but everything black like this, at one time that was a piece of a bone. This piece. Nah, I was hoping I could tell if it was turtle shell, but nope. Chunk of wood. See more just, you know, they're bone, but they're no longer identifiable. We must not break the streak. we got to find at least one shark's tooth. See, so you're looking for interesting patterns. We'll let that sucker dry out. Let's see what he looks like when he's dry. And there's a tooth. Not a particularly big one, but it's a tooth. The teeth are always fun to find. That's what everybody's out here looking for, is those big ones, though. We're looking at your shark's tooth that you found. You'll notice it has a flat side. I don't know if it'll show on camera, but we'll go ahead and show it anyways. And then there's a curved side. The curved side is the inside of the tooth. That's the side facing the shark's mouth. The flat side is the side you would see. The tooth will always curve towards the back. So if you put this tooth flat side out and then aim the hook to the back, it's you can see that it's going to pull the, the meat backwards. Now, the top and bottom is more of a judgment call. After seeing lots of teeth like this, I know this one's a bottom tooth. It's a little squattier looking. When you find, you know, you find you know, 20, 30 shark's teeth, you'll start being able to recognize that you know some teeth are long and skinny for their size and others are short and fat. So this one would be a bottom right back tooth from uh, Mako. That could go for anywhere from 10,000 to hundreds of millions. From where like the last, you know, pre-ice age, last warm cycle when Florida was underwater, I want to say it was 33,000 years ago, all the way back to um, hundreds of millions. And you want to take your time when you're looking. I've helped people fossil hunt for 20 years or more. Mm -hmm. So I know what to look at. You know, just odd color, see how that's two-toned? Yeah. Stuff like that will grab your eye. If it grabs your eye, consider it. See if it is something. This one, there's a little shell fossil. Whoops. Little shell fossil stuck in it. Technically, it's a rock, but it's also a fossil. Because fossils aren't just bones. Sometimes they're impressions of bones. Feels almost like clay. That's limestone. So, like, there's rough limestone, and then there's smooth limestones. The rough, you usually got to look at to see it. So what I like doing is I start down at the bottom of the gravel bar and I snorkel and I fan my way up. That way I can, the hole fills in behind me so I'm not damaging the bottom of the river. It just shifts the, the bottom around a little bit but it doesn't mess it up in or anything. And that way I'm looking for the big stuff, not just the little stuff. When I'm looking for little stuff, that's when I use a sifter, you know, when I just want to have some fun. If I'm out hardcore looking, I'm usually snorkeling. consider there might be a snake or an alligator up in there but that's also if everybody else is afraid to look there 
know, that, that's a good spot to look. Because if nobody else is willing to get up in there, nobody else is hunted there, hopefully. I'm not having any luck yet, though. This isn't a particularly scary snag, though. <laughs> but I'm hoping I'll find that tooth that everybody else has ignored because they're not getting up in the tree. And there was an alligator that I was laid up in there, and I grabbed his tail. That gave me a heart attack. I jumped out of the water up on like the tree trunk. These are interesting. I showed you a little chunk earlier. This is more like the piece I had. If you take this home, let it dry out, set it somewhere where light rain will hit it, not heavy rain, it'll start eroding and there will be fossils in here. A piece this size, I guarantee there's fossils in it. But then I can see anything on it right this second. That's a whole different story. And as a side benefit when fossil hunting like this, you get to get you know, exfoliated by the minnows. We're here at Canoe Outpost Peace River on the Peace River, just north of Arcadia, Florida. We've got Trent Anthony here, and Trent's one of the top guys with this uh, outfitting operation. How many canoes do you guys operate? We have 263 canoes and uh, I believe 20 kayaks at the moment and five stand-up paddle boards. Wow. Yeah, it's the end of March. Uh, we were out here today on a mission for fossil hunting and shark tooth hunting. The river's famous for shark tooth hunting. In fact, I've got a pocket full right here of smaller shark teeth, but shark teeth nevertheless. But the real prize are these right yeah the megalodon teeth that's what megalodon. everybody wants to find they're they're considered amazing this one is one we found several years ago probably about six seven years ago we kept it to show people you know when they came up to the window keep, you know keep their interest perked up you know let people know it still happens so then we had a customer come and he finds hundreds of them i don't know how he does it he blows everybody else away including the locals he gave us this one a few years ago so he came back a couple weeks ago and he gave us this one Absolutely perfect, four and a half inches of just gorgeousness. Just made our day. What, what, what kind of tooth? Well, that's a megalodon shark. Is that the yeah, name of it? Yeah, that's a shark. It is a megalodon, Piper, is what Piper it is. Shark. These things are heavy. I mean, this thing weighs a couple pounds because it's it's rock, right? Yes. It's heavy, when, dense when, rock. When these fossils form, it's they, they become a fossil by replacing mm -hmm. the bone, or in this case, the tooth. The minerals in the, in the tooth, like the calcium, get replaced by other minerals from the stone that absorb into it. Yeah, we found smaller teeth today from like uh, lemon sharks, I guess. Those lemon sharks, sharks. you got the, the snaggle tooth, the mako. And a great white. A great white. Yeah, real, real cool variety. <laughs> it, it helps when you, you're out there looking around with somebody who knows what they're doing. So what do people need if they want to come out here to uh, look for shark's teeth? You don't need anything. You can find stuff just with your hands. A sifter will help you get through a lot, lot more material faster. For bigger stuff like this, a lot of people just use a mask and snorkel. If you're bypassing all the little stuff, you don't want to mess with a half inch or three quarter inch or one inch tooth. You can bypass all that and just snorkel and like fan the bottom and look for them. Uh -huh. Just explore the river. But yeah. you know, most people like to go out and sift. That way, they're they're finding stuff continuously, as well as looking for those big ones. Yeah. Uh, what else do people should people know about this? Anything else to offer? I mean, we've got a whole variety of things we can offer for various overnight trips to camping. school groups. You know, we can do a whole variety mm -hmm. of things. Just because of our size, we can we can accommodate groups that other places can't sometimes. Yeah. You know, there's campgrounds that, you know, they've only got 20 sites. They can't handle it. You can go canoeing and camping and get an a even better experience possibly, you know, out there on the water where, you know, other people can't right. do that. Well, we only had a couple hours today, about three or four at most, and we did a four four and a half mile trip, stopped a few spots to look. I can't wait to come back and do it again, maybe do a longer trip. Heck, maybe even pitch tent, stay overnight. I've, it's really an awesome place, so check it out. Uh, Trent, thanks a lot. Thank you. Appreciate everything. I appreciate you, know. you coming. Learned a lot, learned a lot. Check it out, it's a lot of fun.